Hey, everybody, this is Sheets. And as customary, we not only have uh, Michael Brave, Jayhawk Jensen, but also lawnmowers. This has become like the theme for the Wednesdays uh, when I've had to, to do these at home when my wife's been recovering from her knee surgery. Um, but you know what? It's good luck so far. Uh, we've, we've been doing pretty well with this. So let me, uh, we're going to go over again uh, how we did and how Survivor in general did last week. And then we're going to get into this week. Um, so last week, so let, let me start with this. The big pool that I always re referenced, meaning that that big double pick pool and this, 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 that, that I'm now out of, he sent out an email yesterday saying that he's been running this pool for what, 10, 15 years. That was the first week in the history of the pool that he had no eliminations. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> not a single elimination. And, and, <laughs> and even and including some misclicks, some non-entries or whatever, um, all the years he's never had a single, a non, nobody lost week. And so on the one hand, yeah, everybody won last week. However, all wins are not created equal. Okay. And, and this is really, really important when, when you think about survivor. So as, as we discussed last week, uh, obviously Philadelphia was the most likely winner. Okay. Of, of the week. Um, and, and Houston was probably the second most likely winner winner of the week. However, you know, because of the of the ownership, uh, Michael and I were very, very confident that the two picks that we should you should be playing were Atlanta and um, and uh, who's the other Jacksonville? I forget now. Uh, Green, uh, Bay. Green Bay. Atlanta and Green Bay. Atlanta and Green Bay. So so it's it was a weird it, it's and you have to be able to comprehend what happened because everybody won. The people who picked Atlanta and Green Bay gained an insane amount of money in equity over the people who played Philadelphia and um, and Houston. It's it's kind of hard to see like right now, but when you when you analyze the equity of those of those entries to be able to have Phil, uh, Houston to some degree and, and most importantly Philly for many weeks that we'll talk about in the future, um, everybody winning was actually kind of a loser for the people that took Philly and, 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 and quite a, quite a healthy winner for the people who played anybody, but like Philly and Houston and got through. So, so it's uh for pe people, people like poker, they can kind of understand this, like the idea of, of, of what your all in equity was, what your future equity is, even if it didn't realize right there, um, it was a really important week for a week for everybody to win. You know what I mean? Uh, if they're, you're going to pick a week for everybody to win, that's the, we want to be on the, the lower, the lower home teams and, and the teams that get fade those teams. So that was, that was really, really important. Uh, now just to review, um, I guess I'll go first. I, uh, I had the, uh, I have two pools I'm playing. I have the single pick pool, which uh, uh, on uh, office pool, which I mean, technically it, it, it's going to go to doubles. If, a certain amount of people are left, but I think we're already under that threshold. There are only 72 people left in that one. And I went one of each. I went one Atlanta, one Green Bay, uh, and both went through. Then in the uh, DraftKings big multi-billion dollar chop fest, uh, I mean, I say that, but who knows? <laughs> but there's still 300 people left. Uh, a couple of stray, either non-entries or whatever, just kind of lost, but maybe three entries total out of like 300 uh, lost. And I went uh, same thing. I went uh, I went one Atlanta, one Green Bay over there. So 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 everybody uh, so everybody advanced, uh, and that's and that's kind of what I what I did. Nobody again, nobody really got busted, but we picked up equity in both pools. I I advanced all my entries as well, but it was not a successful EV gain week for me, unfor unfortunately. And in, in my one pool was seventeen left. Uh, we started a little over a thousand uh, standard single picks, but it extends into the playoffs. That's amazing, though. By the way, <laughs> seventeen left out of a thousand. <laughs> yeah, thousand seventy, and and it was the the, the pick breakdown was uh, very very unfortunate. Um, I I mean, I guess I, I don't have any regrets because you know when you have so few people left, if two people think differently, it just it skews. It excuse the it excuse the entire thing, but our pick our, my pick down breakdown was disastrous. It was uh, out of seventeen, we had uh, eight Philly, uh, four Atlanta, three Green Bay, one Houston, one Baltimore, and I took the Atlanta. So I, I like. Well, I don't know. What do you want though? I mean, you know. Um, oh. I, I, 
I mean, I was hoping there would be more than one Houston and one Baltimore. Right. Um, absolutely. It, it, you know, that, so that was unfortunate. The one, and the one Baltimore pick was one of my one of my sharper friends that, uh, you know, and so he was the only Baltimore. Um, I, I don't. I mean, the question is, what would I have done if I knew? Yeah. What it was, I. Well, I, I mean, I tell you what, I would have went one Houston. I, I would, I never right. would have got on Baltimore just because of weeks eight and nine. Right. I would like to have them there as an option, and and I'm going to get to that later. Why I feel Baltimore is going to be important to have, and you know, basically, there's a there's a don't have I don't have any terminology for this, but in order to push forward Kansas City late in the season without having to drop too low, there's a very unique setup that you need you need to you need to already have a couple teams available and then you need to, you know, pick a, a, you know, kind of a, a precise way the next few weeks in order to have Kansas city for the middle of the se- middle end of the season, which is going to be very valuable when they have uh, some two touchdown favorite games coming up in my other pool. We had, we had doubles this week and I, again, I'd always rather win than lose, but it, it feels like a huge loss. I did not do anything crazy in this one. We had 700 and two people come into the week and 28 were eliminated, but 17 picks weren't made. So, uh, and I don't know why it's an odd number because it should be, an, that means one person picked one game and didn't pick another one. So mm-hmm. 16, uh, 17 of the 28 people got eliminated. Didn't, you know, forgot to make their picks and we lost, uh, the rest were lost on Tennessee and then, uh, and three people lost on Denver. So a disappointing week for doubles. I always look forward to those weeks because if it breaks down in your favor, I mean, incredible things could happen. I went, I went very, we'll call it chalky. It was safe. It was a good like hedge against my other pool. I went Philadelphia, Atlanta, Philadelphia, Green Bay, and Atlanta, Green Bay. And I'm pretty sure that's what I I said a week ago in the podcast. I was going to play it pretty safe. I, I was more concerned with, Keeping all of my Houston, which I have in all three pools, keeping all of my Baltimore, and uh, I was able to do that by by going that route. So basically, everybody survived and advances. But like Eric said, not all entries are created equal. You know, if you're able to, you know, get you know skate through with one team over another, I I, I actually feel the biggest loss was if you took Baltimore this week, yep. um, because of they, 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 if your, if your pool makes it toward the end, Baltimore has, has a lot has several spots, especially in the next two weeks. But um, you know, sometimes you have to take Baltimore again. My friend took Baltimore. He's in a lot of pools. There's definitely a scenario where if I had more entries across more pools, they, I would have put them into my portfolio and I would have taken Philadelphia at some point as well. I, I wouldn't just, if I had 15 entries left across several pools, I wouldn't have just gone all in on Atlanta and Green Bay. I, I would have sprinkled in some other other plays. So I want to show you something funny. Um, uh, and, and this is kind of a testament to how about analyzing future value and future spots. And to the, my, my concept that the further out that you project – the more, you know, fragile those projections are, you know, right. with how, with how, what's going to be available and what's going to be chalky and what's going to be a good play. Like, for example, what I have up here right now is the week one survivor grid. Okay. So it's what survivor grid and everybody thought everything was going to be for the whole season starting yeah. one. And if you look to, to week eight, you have Cleveland and Baltimore projected at Pickham. <laughs> You know, yeah, uh, and that's just you know. Listen, that's just that's just the way it goes. You know, you know things change, and Deshaun Watson falls off the map, and and Amari Cooper gets traded. You know, and Cleveland basically gives up. You know, and so now, all out of not out of nowhere, but now you have Baltimore, who all of a sudden is just is val- is ex- extremely valuable, like in eight. Um, in addition to nine, like you were saying. Yeah, I mean, we weren't even thinking about this yeah. even a week a week ago. But this is where it's – and I, I've mentioned this several times. This is where it's really important when you're deciding between two or three teams on who to take this week. Look at a team's playoff ch- uh, percentage chances. Look who they play toward the end of the last four weeks of the season. If they're playing teams that are like that are likely to mail it in, 
that have very that have very low playoff chances. Those are the teams that you don't want to use now that you want to save for later or, or hold on to for uh, for later rather because they might only be like three point spreads right now. But what you're betting on is the hope that the uh, the teams that they're playing mail it in and th- and the team that you're holding on to you know holds on to their you know their playoff chances so when you get to that week that's that three point spread now could be seven eight nine ten points later now preferably you want to do this with teams that not everybody is going to have so we're not talking about you know fringe teams that you know like the rams the rams are not an example because they have low playoff chances but a, a, a team that everybody has is, isn't going to be as valuable, but a team that's at least been has some moderate usage so far that that doesn't have a lot of weeks to play. Like a team like Minnesota comes to mind. They're undefeated, I right? They're undefeated, but it's not really a team that you know you're going to lose. You're going to use in a lot of weeks, uh, but they're going to be in the playoff race the entire season. So, you know, that's 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 a team that you'd rather hold on to because you, there's like a 100 percent chance they're going to be playing for a playoff bid or or seeding late in the season. All right. So we're going to get into this week and we're going to go through the same uh, process we've been doing, which has been working out as far as both analysis and results, actually, is we're going to start with with with, you know, we're going to rank the teams by win percentage. And, and Mike's going to start by just kind of like crossing off like kind of the non-obvious, you know, the obvious cross-offs. And then I'll just, you know, affirm that those are obvious cross-offs or not. And then we'll, then we'll get into it. Now I'm, I'm one of the thing, I don't know if I've, if I've stressed this, but I don't know if you guys that have been, you know, watching know this, but Mike and I never talk about what we're going to talk about before, before we start. I mean, we, 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 we log in and we just fire up the recording and, and I'm, I'm, I, I, I don't want to say I fear, but I have this feeling that we're going to come out a little differently this week. Oh my gosh. I was going to say that right when you threw it back to me. Yeah, I, I, I'm very, very confident. I, now, I don't, but I when don't you know. say that, I think now we're going to be in the same thing, but I was going to maybe, say the same exact baby. thing. Maybe. We'll, we'll, I, I, I'm very curious to see if you say what I think you're going to say. Um, I think we're going to have, I, I think we'll we're going to have the same exact pick again, but I uh, really listen. thought it was going to be the opposite. Oh, okay. That, that, that's funny. Uh, okay. Uh, um, all right. So why don't you just get started? Uh, I mean, we're definitely going to cross off uh, Baltimore. Uh, we, you know, we already talked about that eight, nine, and then they have a great closeout uh, weeks 15 through 18, but there's not really a lot of obvious ones to throw, you know, to throw out this week. Um, I also have you know, Philadelphia down. You know, you know you're not going to not play Philadelphia last week to play them, you know, at the Giants this week when, you know, you know when you can clearly take you know five, six, seven, eight, nine point favorites this week. So you're, we're not taking Philadelphia. They have plenty of other you know spots and they have a you know pretty decent closeout. Dallas could be just completely out of it too. So their closeout of four, uh, fourteen onward it, uh, looks looks very promising for Philadelphia. Those are the only like clear, obvious ones. Um, I mean, the other ones we can just get to later because it's kind of like, well, we'd rather take this team over this team because this team is a better closeout. So th- those can, are like the can only. I, two can I cross out there. Indianapolis and below here? Um, or leave yeah, Indianapolis. Yeah, the only yeah the only reason I was going to even consider them is if you have doubles this week. But I, I if you have singles, I would never go below Jacksonville. So yeah, I could if you have doubles, then you know we can start discussing. Okay. Indianapolis, at, uh, Atlanta, Green Bay, but yeah, we can just eliminate all of those. All right, so hmm. All right, so I guess I'll just start then with with these because listen, these are the five, right? So these yeah. are the five that have you know that 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 are in there. I mean, I, I maybe this is not where I thought we'd be different. I thought that you'd be right there with me on this one. I um I I think Cincinnati's a complete throwout this week. Um uh I I uh. They, they do have good EV, and you know I am kind of quite the EV whore in general. Um, but I just think they're just too strong in other weeks. Um, I don't know. Like uh, I was going to save that for my my push Casey forward discussion, but yeah, I, I mean I have them as a, as a clear save. Yeah. So so since not like not like a laugh out loud bad. Play. Yeah. This nine. Not, I mean nine. Not to mention, God forbid you get there like sixteen. They're like a lock now, considering what Cleveland's doing. You know. Um, yeah. And Denver in seventeen, so we'll 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 we'll, we'll, we'll knock knock uh, Cincinnati out. So these so these next these four are 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 the decision makers. Um, and so a lot of this, 
specifically with, well, I guess with the Buffalo and the Jacksonville is going to depend on what you have left because um, there are some people that did use Jacksonville that, that put them out of play for them. And there are quite a few people that, including me, that, that, uh, that use Buffalo um, and put them sort of out of play. Like of my four entries that I, that I still have left across my pools, three of them, three of them don't even, I already burned Buffalo. Um, so I don't even have them really as an option except on one pool. And I, I'm not using them on this one either. I, I would, I would love to have one Buffalo kind of lurking around, um, be it for, a, you know, a, a, for nine, be it, you know, for 16, you know, if, if we get to there somehow. Um, so I, I'm inclined to, to save Buffalo, um, and, and fight over the, the, the final three. What, what, let's talk about Buffalo first. What do you think about Buffalo? Uh, okay, so we are different. This is the first time we've been a while. I, I've already used Jacksonville, but I, I'll still speak for why, you know, Jacksonville is a good pick. But even – I'm going to consider that if, even if I have Jacksonville available, for my pool specifically, I, I like Buffalo. I don't think my pool is necessarily – you don't, I don't have to have all the teams available when it was 17 left. There's going – you know – if we lose one person a week, you know, from here on out, you know, just one, one per week, you know, that would leave, that would leave us with uh, like eight people left. And, and that's, that's, that's extremely conservative. So I, I'm kind of looking at like a, you know, a possible week 14 end for my specific pool. So I like Buffalo because I'm not going to be taking the outside, you know, week nine, but I have a lot of options there. Buffalo's not even going to be a consideration until week 16. So I, I actually really like Buffalo a lot. And I'm, and I'm probably going to, I might go all in on them in my, my pool of double picks. And that will, and I, I think that will definitely go to week 16, but you know, you have to use a lot of teams in that pool. And I would rather keep my strength for the week 12 and 13 doubles than hope to have Buffalo available in doubles in 16. But yeah, you, know, you know, Buffalo, 13 of the 17 entries have them available. They have the highest win percentage. You know, in a worst case scenario, 14 people will take them. That's not going to happen. We do have two entries. We, have, we do have two people with two entries. And this is where if you're in a pool with 300 people left, like if you're on DraftKings, it's not as important to like, you know, dive this deep. But with 17 people left, you know, I look at what the people did last week with two entries. And one of them I know went Atlanta Green Bay off the top of my head. The other one went Atlanta Philly. So I'm going to assume that, you know, they're going to split again. So they're not going to take two, but you know, two Buffalo. Oh, actually, okay. One person's already used Buffalo in one of theirs, but I, I, I like Buffalo a lot. I, I, I you're gonna, it, it, they're not the best EV play, but I think it'll help my EV in some of these other weeks because I will have. Well, I guess it only help you with not taking Cincinnati because the other teams really aren't usable. Uh, but Buffalo has the highest win percentage, and with this few people left, you know Washington might be higher picked than Buffalo. And you know, I, you really just have no way of knowing. I, well, I just well, you just guess. Well, you made you made, you made a, a point that I was going to stress. Um, is that you know, and, and I, we say this every week, but I should have stressed it more. Is that your pick is 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 in large part going to come down to what type of pool you're in when you're between these picks. You know, like uh, as you mentioned, you know, if you're if you're if you're down to 17 people or less, you should take less risk. Um, as far as your your immediate win percentage, you know, um, when all else is equal. You know, um, I, I I wonder, though, and again, I don't want to talk you off of this, but because I'm not playing either of these teams. I'm trying to think of the real difference between Buffalo and Cincy for you. Um, I mean, I want to compare apples to apples. OK, Buffalo is a little lot more likely to win this week. That's for sure. They're, I guess Cincinnati's a little bit better in nine than Buffalo. Yeah, I mean, that, that it comes. That's that's exactly what it comes down to is okay. week nine, because. If if I if I want to if, if I could use Baltimore possibly in eight, 
And if I don't use Baltimore in eight, I could keep them for 15, 16, 18, which again, I just said that I'm not playing for the end of the season, but I want to have more than zero teams for the end of the season. Oh. Like I don't, I don't need to have Baltimore and Buffalo. Both those teams have overlap. They both are really good plays in 16 yeah. and, and 18. So I, I don't need both of them, but I, I would really like to have one of them. Now and the other so, the, the other thing though is is and again this is I, I I I could be wrong but I'm looking at the survivor grid spread projection but like if Tua is not back isn't Buffalo like minus ten over Miami is that that five and a half isn't real is it I mean I, I I'm not I don't know what's going on with that uh that that's correct I mean that, that that's the only other play for Buffalo between this week and sixteen is is is, is that week but I I haven't used. I'm 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 not the only one in this group, but I haven't used any Baltimore, Cincinnati, Kansas City, Buffalo. So right. since I have all four of those, right? Okay, I, I, I'm okay, and I'm never ever ever using Kansas City here ever. Uh, but if I have Baltimore, Cincinnati, Buffalo available, um, or at least two of those three, it allows me to push Kansas City forward, which is very important. If you look Kansas at Kansas City, what are, we, what are you talking? Wait, wait, where, where are you talking about Kansas City? Well, because in week nine, if, unless assuming these spreads are accurate, unless oh, right. you want to drop nine. to a three or four point spread, you I got, you I need, got. No, I was, I was sorting. Yeah. Okay, okay, fair enough. You need to have those those other teams because I, I, I'm not. If I use Kansas City in any of my pools, that means I made it to week twelve. I, I, I like that. That's you know for du- for for what, doubles. What what no? What I just meant though is isn't. I mean, I, this is not my skill set, but. Isn't Buffalo going to be not minus five and a half? Aren't isn't Buffalo going to be minus ten this week? Um. Oh, 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 yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That's, that's two is yeah, that's not a good in. Point. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I can't imagine this being the spread unless two is back. You know. Um, yeah, I, I get. You're definitely betting on that, and, and with with what I feel about that situation, I, I, I would rather bet that he's not coming back. So you, you know, you, you actually, you're, you're talking me out of it. I. No, I'm trying not to. You know what I mean? No, because, no, no, no. I appreciate that because I'm not going to care one way. In the end, I'm going to make my decision based on yeah. the likelihood of Tua playing. If I, you know, if I knew Tua was not playing, then I would never play Buffalo this week because I would play Buffalo that week, and then I would I would take uh, and then push the all that other, push all that other stuff out. I mean, yeah, I take the Rams or Washington, and that, and that and that definitely, even if that didn't happen, that would make my entry the strongest it could possibly be would be able to play Buffalo right there after a lot of people play Buffalo this week. So I'm glad we, I, no, I'm glad we, we, we talked about that. Cause now I'm just not going to, I'm going to look more into it, but yeah, I'm, I'm just not going to play Buffalo this week because of that. Cause it's more important to hope that two, it is not playing nine and then their season's over. And I mean, you know, it, you're also betting on if Miami just loses the next two games, I mean, would they even play to anyway? Oh, right. I mean, I mean, even if he was ready to, like, would they? I mean, probably, probably not. So, I guess it, it, part of the decision could come down to who Miami plays, and if they're at Indianapolis and then versus Arizona. It seems weird to consider that, but if their season's over, if they lose the next two games, there's no way he's coming back. Uh, for, you know, for that game. So I. This is this is the st- type of analysis that I, is really important at this stage, especially with teams that have overlapping st- uh, strong weeks, like you know Buffalo and Baltimore. Like you don't need to have both of them for the end of the season, but you'd like to have one. And but one is always more important than the other because it's going to allow you to push other teams like Kansas City out further. Because taking Kansas City, at, uh, I don't see any reason why anyone should ever have taken Kansas city no. up until this point. And I don't see any reason why I would ever personally take them before 10. You know, there are exceptions of a bunch of people get knocked out the next few weeks. And there's like three people left and we're in week 10 and I'm the only one with Kansas city left somehow. Oh well, yeah. I'm obviously taking Kansas city, but um, you, you have to look forward on these weeks because unless you are taking the lone wolf team, by you know, and th- and that would assume that you're you know you're, you're going to be dropping, and then you're going to get a bunch of these upsets. The, 
it's going to go to these other weeks. It's, it, it, the pool's not over in three weeks. My, my pool is at least going to go to, if, if I if I am still in it. Right. At a bare minimum, assuming we don't chop, it has to go to like week eleven, probably at least, because if you look at week nine, two teams aren't going to be picked week nine. It's going to be Baltimore, Cincinnati, Kansas City, Buffalo. Is that four teams, is that, and they're all going to be eight point favorites plus is, all is of them. That, they're is, they're all not losing. Is that one double? Th- uh, no, no. But even singles, assuming they're all eight point favorites or higher, yeah. And you take one of them, yeah. the chances of all three of the others losing is very, very, very small. And right. it, and the chances of you being lone wolf on that on that one winner is like impossible. So right. the pool is going to my pool is going to at least at least week eleven, and that's. That's assuming even disasters happen. So you have to play for the, these these uh, playing ahead. All right. So let me ask you this. Okay. I'm not Xing out Buffalo. I'm just leaving them there because we just discussed them. Actually, we can leave them up there. Um, so Washington, Rams, and Jacksonville. Okay. Um, you you mentioned that you used Jacksonville, so you didn't think about him that much. Why why don't you try to put your hat on and present- Oh no, I will. I like I like Jacksonville. I, so, I, I think so, I think they're. Wow. I what? think they're a clear good play. Why don't you rate these three teams for me, Washington, Rams, and Jacksonville? Because I have some thoughts on this. I mean, I think Jacksonville is definitely the best play. Um, I, I, I really do. Um, it, it can go both ways with how people, uh, you know, pick, decide to pick these, these Europe games. But Jacksonville has looked atrocious. And the reason that matters to me is I like to pick teams that have looked really bad recently. And they have looked really bad. I mean, Trevor Lawrence is horrible. Um, I, I mean, I, I'm almost surprised that they, they didn't fire the coach, but maybe because they're there in Europe for two weeks, they decide not to. This team is horrible. But they're also playing a really horrible team. And, you know, some people, they might not make their decision until – I don't know, after church on Sunday. Well, this game starts at 8.30 Central. So if, if, you're making your, if you're making your pick, you know, right before start time, well, those people aren't going to be p- taking Jacksonville because they might have forgot that they're, they're playing. They, you know, maybe they place hold the biggest favorite and, and think about it later, and then it's too late. So, I, I, you know, not with 17 people left, but, you know, I, I think that is a thing. Um, some people like to watch the games that they bet on. Well, I mean, me personally, I, I'm going to my daughter's swim meet on Sunday. So I'm not – I won't be watching this game whether I, 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 I would have picked him or not. My phone would have been off and I would have been at the swim meet. Um, so I, I think these small, seemingly insignificant things do add up. I, I, I think people are less likely to pick this game for several different reasons. But in the en- end of the day, they're, you know, it's almost, they're 68% to win, and they're a better team than the, who they're playing. Um, and if you want to throw some, you know, abstract things in that don't matter, well, I, I feel better that they've been in Europe for a week and New England hasn't, um, that they have experience playing over there. If you want to throw in some, you know, things that really don't matter but make you feel better about it, because I would be all over Jacksonville if I, if I had them available. And, and really, I'm, I don't see how I don't take them in uh, – because you just talked me off of Buffalo – I don't see how I don't take uh, Jacksonville, my other pool, and then just go all in on Buffalo in week nine in, in my in my pool of doubles later. How, how do you rank Washington versus the Rams? Um, well, you know, it, it's just so hard because I'm looking at these pick percentages. And uh, in my pool, personally, you know, it's another fun week because 17 out of 17 have Cincinnati. 17 out of 17 have the Rams. 15 out of 17 have Jacksonville. I'm, I'm one of the two that have taken them. How many have Washington? Everybody or a couple of uh, tw- 12 have them left, and then 13 have Buffalo. Very similar to last week where, you know, everyone has all the teams available. Not as much so as last week. But, you know, I, I, I like Washington more for my pool because five yeah. people have already taken them. Yeah. And it really just depends, you know, who has them. I, I'm going to do a quick look. This isn't – this isn't going to apply to everybody else, but okay. One person that has two entries left, they took Washington once. The other person that has two entries, they've also take Washington once. And those are the two people. Okay. Those are the two people. So that leaves, you know, so I would say they're more likely to take 
you know, they're, I mean, they're going to be, I think they're going to be very likely to take them. At least one of them will probably take Washington, I, w- I would guess. Uh, but it's not, you know, it's not a certainty. Um, but we know that they're not taking two, you know, LA Rams, LA Rams, but they could go Rams, Jacksonville. They could go Rams, Cincinnati. They could go Buff, uh, Buffalo and Rams. I, I would assume they would go Buffalo and somebody else. Uh, but I, I like Washington because he, although their, their pick percentage is high, this is it. You're not using this team as it is right now for the remainder of the season. Yes, it could change, but, you know, I'm looking at their, at their schedule. You know, they're at New, well, New Orleans. Is Derek Carr out for the whole rest of the year? I honestly have no idea. Well, I don't know. What happened to him? Rattler had a good game. I mean, they're going to start, they're going to go with Rattler for now, I guess. Did, did, did he just have a concussion? I, 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 honest, I honestly don't remember what happened. I, know, I think Rattler just started, they did think they just benched him. Um, okay. Okay. Um, I mean, they're, they have Philadelphia, Atlanta, and at Dallas. So Washington's not really a team that, you know, you're really going to, you would like to have at the end. So this is, this is really it for them. It's, it's far and away their best. It's really, it might be like the only game they're almost favored of the rest of the year. So, it's as it home is home against Tennessee, where where there's a lot of other options in third. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, well, I I like Washington for that reason. Sometimes you're just, I mean, I you know, I was gonna, I wrote right here, I was gonna eat it with Buffalo. It, you know, even though it's not the best EV play, I don't mind eating it with Washington because although it's showing 33, percent they're very similar to Buffalo. So, you know, it could be one of those things where Buffalo's 40. Let's say, what's to say they're each 30 percent picked on average. So 60% total, it could go 45% Buffalo, 15% Washington for your pool. It could, it, you know, all, all it takes is a, a couple, you know, a, a couple people, you know, leaning, uh, leaning uh, the, the other way from, from the average. So I, I do like Washington because the, the, the percentages aren't going to hold as strongly uh, with a small, with a smaller percentage of the pool left. If this was like week one, I would, you know, I would believe in what the pick percentage is and I would never take Washington. But when there's a lot less people left and, you know, we're talking about in my pool, 17 people and 13 have Buffalo left and 12 have Washington. I can just say, yeah, I really want now I really want Buffalo for nine because, you know, Eric pointed that out. I, I could just I could sleep at night, even if I was wrong, just hoping that more people take Buffalo than Washington and then just take Washington. And just hope it works out. So this is why I don't play poker anymore. Um, so I really thought that what we were going to hear from Mike um, was the following. Okay. This is what I was going to, this is what I thought I was going to hear. I thought I was going to hear. This is going to be one of those situations, Sheets or Eric, where I'm going to take, go push all in on Washington. And I don't care what the, what the percentages are. Every once in a while, you come up with one of them. But I said that for Buffalo. That's, that, I no, mean, I, 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 we were very, you're very close. No, um, and and the reason why is is yeah. I didn't think that you were going to play Buffalo because I thought you'd be holding for nine and ten. Yeah, and and Washington does look like like the ultimate pure play because they literally yeah. have zero spots. Um, now now um, well, let, let me let me jump in. This is why it's really really important to not just listen to other people's viewpoints, but more importantly, have, you know, friends, colleagues, you know, people at the poker table to discuss this stuff with, because him just saying that right now, I, I mean, I, I have a note here. It says, you know, watching bad end of the season. And, and I, and I, and I do have them as a play, but you know, I, I have no idea what I'm going to do. Well, I'm well, definitely well, not. I'm definitely not playing well, Buffalo. So I'm definitely well, hang, not well, hang on. Well, hang on. Well, with that said, okay, this is what I thought you were, you were going to say. I um, might go all in on Washington. I might do but, that. But 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 let me tell you what I think. Okay, also. So this is what I was this is this was my analysis. And for me, this is like like an easy week. Okay. Um, it's an easy week to analyze. And I have just literally no intangibles rolling this week. And for me, it's like it's like all math. So this this is the way I look at this. Okay. I look at Washington, the Rams, and Jacksonville, and this is what I see. I see three teams. That have no spots left. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I see Washington with literally zero because they're in 13. There's like a zillion other options. I see the Rams with literally zero two. Well, because, well, sort of, 
Only because, like, even 11 against at New England, I mean, 11, there are other teams you can play. And maybe, just maybe, like the Rams in 17 against Arizona, possibly. Um, but even in 17, I, mean, I got Tampa ready to kill people with in 17. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I got, why, I got Rams with zero. I got Jacksonville with sort of zero. Oh, you know, it's zero. Their season's over. Well, yeah, again, well, zero. well, well, again, listen, if they do get their act together, they'll be a seven point favorite over Tennessee in 17. Okay. That's the only. No, oh, I mean, no, because I mean, Trevor Lawrence might not be playing. No, he, I mean, uh, what, their, what playoff, said, their playoff wait, percent wait, chance. Wait, what I so said small. was, what, what I said was, if they get their act together. Okay. I'm just saying, yeah. like, what ifs, right? But yeah. right now, like you said, I, it, it's doubtful. So I got Washington, the Rams, and Jacksonville as the same team as far as their future value. Yeah. So considering that the future value for the same is zero, for me, I'll just rate these teams by EV, by immediate EV, given their percentages, and I will rank them as follows. Rams one, Jacksonville two, Washington three. And um, that's the way I'm approaching this week. Now, fortunately, I have four entries across my pools. And I am going to be doing some combination of these three teams, uh, Rams, Jacksonville, Washington. Te- technically, what I probably should do is 1.5 Rams, 1.5 Jacksonville, and one Washington. Um, but I can't. <laughs> you, yeah. can't take, you can't take half of a team. Um, the one thing I will say is that um, – the, the Jacksonville Rams plays play better in the pools with like 300 because I really need to get some people out of that one, you know? Um, so, so if I'm going to pick a pool for Washington to lose, I'd rather it be one with 300 people in really just to kind of like do whatever. So, so uh, in, in the DraftKings one, these are the teams I'd be more likely to play. Um it happens that I have one uh, entry in the in the one with 73 left, which is really freaking strong. I mean, it's got like the whole country left. It's got San Francisco. It's got Philly. It's got Houston. It's got everybody. So in that entry, I'm inclined to take the Washington, okay? Um, they have no future value anyway. Their EV is a little worse, but they have better winning percent chances than these other two. So that's what I, and, and so for me, it's going to be one Rams, one's Jacksonville, one Washington. The only question is which of these two, the Rams or Jacksonville go next, but that's, yeah. that's the way I am analyzing this week. Um, uh, and again, we're in different pools and in different situations. You know, if I, if I had a pool with 17 left, um, uh, I, again, I, I hate to tell you what to do, but, but you have no. 17. Tell me, I, yeah. Tell if me, you, if you have seventeen left and five of them already took Washington, I mean, I would just cram them. You know what I mean? Like, and 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 you have to also when you do your analysis, think of how many people that have Washington also have Buffalo. You know, because yeah, have, no, that, they, that, that that's really important because when if people are looking at one thing, that 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 really helps because yeah, you're not you're not you're not going so deep into it where you're you're analyzing stuff that your opponents aren't thinking about, but. The, the point Eric just made is, is an important one. The one that correlates directly, like if they have Buffalo still left too, that, that, that's, that stuff's important. And, and the that, thing that's that, the but, one but information listen, they're using. But, but listen, if they have Washington and Buffalo left, it's still a better play. Well, is it? No, it's not. A, I mean, like you could argue that Buffalo is a better play than Washington, like, like you did. You know what I mean? Like everybody could argue very nicely that Buffalo, Buffalo might be a better play than Washington. The point then is that, of the of the of the seven, what no of the twelve that have what? Let's just say that of those twelve, that I don't know, five six of them have both. I don't know if that's possible. But let's say that six of them have both. You could then project maybe another three, you know, on Buffalo. You know what I mean, or another two or something. And now you're talking about Washington, like capped at twenty five thirty percent owned. You know. Um, which which then makes them, given the fact that it's a low, you know, there are only 17 left, probably, in my opinion, the best play. I don't know. But then again, what you like to do is, and we talked about this, is that when it gets down to the nitty gritty and people are getting a little nervous to freaking hammer people 
Um, and then, but, but, but hammering people just isn't, isn't playing Buffalo. You know what I mean? Like if you were going to hammer people, you play someone except for Buffalo or Washington, you know, um, yeah. you're not doing that for me, it's, it is between Buffalo and Washington for you. Um, and I, I don't, I don't, I really don't know the answer, but yeah, it, but, it's, uh, it's going to take a lot more thought. You know, I, you know, last week, although just one week, very small sample, four people took Atlanta, three people took Green Bay. When I really thought right. more than one would take Houston, more than one would take Baltimore. I, I, around half taking Philly is, is, is more or less what I expected. But th- that, that means something. I, you know, it, it makes me believe that maybe more, less people will take Buffalo uh, because they did n- not, n- like no one took Baltimore last week, just uh-huh. one person. Uh, but how what many, I do, how many, what, how many have Jacksonville available in your pool? Uh, 15. And I'm one of okay. the ones who used them. Uh, okay. So, Oh, so you already used Jacksonville. Oh, good. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about that one. Okay. So it is, it is nice that that happens because everyone, every person that takes Jacksonville is, is, is going to be, you know, a free roll for me. Everybody's got in your pool has the Rams available. So yep. you'll, you'll get some of that, you know, you'll get, I'll, a, ga- I'll gain EV on whoever takes Cincinnati. You'll get a couple uh, of people taking the Rams. You'll get a couple of people take. So you'll, this is what you're going to get. You're going to get a couple of people taking the Rams and you're going to get a ton on Buffalo and Washington. That's what you're going to get. But, but you, the, the real question then is where is, is what that ton means? Like how many yeah. Buffaloes versus Washington? I think that, I think that, that how many, well, how many have Buffalo available? 13. I, I'm, Oof. I'm pretty confident that Washington is, is, is a fade in this one because okay. the two people with two entries remaining have both already taken Washington. And I, I just I think that they're and one of them has already taken Buffalo. So I, I think one of them could easily just say, oh, I'm just going to close out both of them. And I think the other one, I think the other one's naturally I, I'm trying to think what I would do in their spot. And I might think, you know what? I might, you know, this might be the herd play, but I'm just going to eat it anyway and just hope and hope it works out and. Just take Washington. Hope more people take Buffalo than Washington. Because in the end, you don't know what. There's too few people left. There's not a big sample. The percentages aren't going to run close to true. One person switch, you know, switching their, changing their mind. Two people going the same direction is going to skew the numbers uh, uh, drastically. Like or last week, one out of seventeen took Houston. One out of seventeen took Baltimore. And the pick percentages for all those teams were much higher than one in seventeen. But that's what happens when there's not a lot of people left. So, but so, for yeah. but for my for my other pool, I, I I because of how many people are left, I'm 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 pretty sure I'm going to go. All, I really think I might go all in on Washington. I have three entries left. There's six hundred and some you know eighty entries remaining. We have doubles in twelve, doubles in thirteen. I'd like to go all in on Buffalo. Um, in what well, you said, nine, right? In nine, and that would push forward all of my Cincinnati and Kansas City in a pool that I have to minimum plan for week 15 with that with 700 people left. And you know, on some from week to week, yeah, I would, I would hate to lose all of my entries, but I'm gonna be able to realize a lot of equity later on in some of these other weeks. I wouldn't mind taking a chalky team with, a, you know, the highest or, you know, among the highest winning percentage to try to advance all of my entries so that on some of these weeks, I don't have to go all in because otherwise, if I don't go all in Washington, I'm, I'm going to have to go uh, Rams and, and Jacksonville. And I don't even know how much Jacksonville I even have in that one. I've already used two of them. So the most I can use is one anyway of my three entries. And that, again, that is doubles in 12 and 13. And I, 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 I want to have the strongest teams for 12 and 13. So I need to have Buffalo for nine. I need to have uh, Baltimore for, you know, eight, nine, eight or nine. So I can push forward my Kansas city and Cincinnati. So I think I might go all in on Washington and, and then and then be a little more conservative later. But the other pool is going to be tough. I, luckily, I, I don't have Jacksonville to choose from. But yeah. I, I think there's arguments. There's very, you know, I could wake up one day and, and and love the Rams, and the next day I wake up, I'm like, you know what? 
I like Washington or, or even Buffalo so, because yeah. So here, here's the the point is that well, the point is this, like, especially, and this should be a lesson to you guys. I mean, when you get down to these 17 people left or or under whatever, and you have a shot to to try to pro, you know pro, to project like who people are playing, that should be the singular focus on your week. It, it is. Yeah. Is just and that's listen. That's what I did with with, with that circa millions the the mini pool. I spent like literally like nine hours trying to sim it, trying to like project it. It, it. it turned out it didn't matter. I would have lost either way. Um, but that's not the point. The point is that when you when you get to shorthanded like shorthanded poker and shorthanded survivor, you know that's where all the leverage is to being right and to being wrong. You know so. So you should be spending all of your time on that and just you know have that whole freaking grid memorized and 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 put you know and, and just really put a column together of what you think and 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 again but 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 do it in terms of 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 ranges of outcomes in other words if it's like between two teams let's say it's between say Buffalo and and the Rams for a team for example for a team Buffalo and Washington for a team just because you think they take Buffalo you know, over Washington, don't make it so just put like Buffalo slash Washington. So that way yeah. you can just like go half and half and you can even add up point fours, point fives and stuff like that. And, and, and just try to, just try to get it right. You know, if you're wrong, you're wrong, but whatever. But, but that should be, instead of like thinking about, oh boy, you know, I wonder if the uh, Kyron Williams is going to have a good day or, or if, uh, you know, if, if, if Trevor Lawrence sucks, you know, or whatever it is. Yeah, cause, Cause then you're, you're basing your decision off of something tangible. Yeah. It, 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 the, the, a lot of incomplete information. Cause there's a lot of slashes. Like, you know, you, you can take people have Buffalo or Washington or they have, or they have all four of these teams available. If you throw, if you took this exact week at these spreads, so we have five teams and let's just pretend Cincinnati, they're like a 10 point favorite, which is not actually realistic. If you look at the, the grid, and let's say this was week 13 instead of week seven. And the, and, the, and the spreads are the exact same. A bunch of threes and then five and a half, six and a half, seven and a half, nine. If you push this forward six, seven weeks, the information, there, it'd be a lot more complete. Right. Even with the same amount of people left. Because more people would have used, you know, Buffalo. Or maybe even some of these other teams, um, th- maybe they somehow got used because something happened one of these other weeks. Then it becomes clear, oh, this person's 100% taking this, this team. Well, this person still has two entries, and they only have, a, they only have two, uh, two selections for one entry and two for another. So it's, it's much more pers- – the they're, 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 uh, they're, range of a selection is very narrow. They're only going to go – they only have like maybe three options between their two entries. So use, using that information now, yeah, there's – in the end, you're still kind of guessing, but you're it's the inc- incomplete information is still better than no information and just and then just picking a name out of a hat because in the end, you might be wrong, but you know you have a better chance. I feel if you use the information, look what they did maybe in previous weeks, like last week specifically for mine, to see how many people went Atlanta and Green Bay and did not take Philly, Houston, or Baltimore. That that. You know, that would make me believe that maybe more people are going to take one, sec- the one, Rams sec- one, one second, one second, one second. Hello, hello. Oh, uh, we're good. We're good. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and don't and, and don't feel like like I don't think I made the wrong decision last week. All I all I know is people go very chalky in this pool. And last week they did that. I don't. So I don't feel like I picked incorrectly. It just now I have a new set of information. And, you know, I'm going to use that information to make my picks, you know, this week and then hopefully going forward from there. All right. This is probably the, uh, all right, we're going to wrap this up. This is probably one of the better, better podcasts we've done and no one will probably understand why, but uh, uh, um, nonetheless, I hope you guys learned something from that. And uh, if you guys are still in, uh, hopefully we helped you make your pick for this week. And with any luck, we'll be, uh, we'll be back one way or the other, Um, but we'll We'll be back. But we'll be back next week. Good luck, everybody. Bye-bye. See you later, uh, Mike. See you, Art. Good luck.